Oh, it's all good, fellas. It's all, it's all good. Like I said, I'm glad to be here. Glad you're having me. Oh, awesome. no, seriously, it really does mean it does mean a lot, man. Especially. So, right, let's kick this all off then. If we're all good to go, and here we is. So, welcome back to another episode of the No Name Podcast, in collaboration with High Creativity, powered by I Am Hip Hop. This is J Juju St. Paul, upgraded to Uncle Juju recently, and I have my man Ish. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. What's up, everybody? And real quick, today is Happy Mom's Day in the UK. So I want to wish true. all my moms out there, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, for real, for real. And we are joined by, uh, it's, it's hard to kind of put you into to, to words, really, especially with what you do is um, the message that you you deliver. But for real, thank you very much. We have Lack, or um, Larry Lack Henderson, should we say. Thank you so much, King, for joining us, as Ish was saying before we recorded. Time is a commodity that we don't have readily, so we appreciate you spending this time with us. And yeah, man, thanks for yeah, thanks for joining our name podcast, man. How are you? I'm good, brothers. I'm good, man. Glad to be here, man. It's happy to be on the show. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. But real fast, the way I could frame it that I see you as a revolutionary. And I think I'll put you in the same uh, arena as a dead press. The reason why right. is every mm. great revolutionary starts from education. And you being a hip hop educator, it starts from that premise. So can you kind of break down the importance of education when it comes to learning ourselves and our culture? Well, first of all, thank you for uh, even I uh, mentioning Dead Prez and me in the same sentence. You know what I mean? I'm 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 a fan of those of those brothers. You know, I've met them. Uh, you know, I love their work. Um, you know, those are incredible artists. So thank you for that. I appreciate that. And secondly, you know, education is um it's important from a lot of different levels. And I'd also like to say, when I say education, you know, people automatically assume that I'm talking about, hey, I want you to go to college or, you know, I'm saying just educating yourself means learning. Educating yourself means opening your mind and accepting new ideas and maybe changing, you know, changing things that you may have thought as you progress in life. You know, so it's about a progressive thing. It's about learning. You know, and education is key. You can learn in the classroom or you can learn in the world as if you study the environment that's around you. And I just think, you know, just developing as a person, that's just personally important. And the fact that I, you know, feel like I have this gift where I can, you know, acquire uh, knowledge from certain books and then put them into a, a, a rhythmic format, you know, that's just what I do. You know what I mean? And 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 to me, that it's important to me to to spread those jewels and and give out that particular knowledge. And you know, it's important to make people aware of things that I don't think everybody is necessarily aware of. So, um, you know, I, I'll start by saying that education is just important from a, just from growing as a human being. And as growing as a human being, how were you able to intersect music and education? Because that's the one thing people learn differently. And when you talk about the rhythm, rhythmic patterns and, and that nature. So can you kind of talk about that, like a little bit in your early days of how you were able to put it two together because not a lot of people can't do that well as you do as well as that's right mm-hmm. can you kind of talk about that journey a little bit well for me you know i was born into the hip-hop era you know i was born um coming up when you know grandmaster flash was uh introduced to the world and and, and ll cool j mm-hmm. and rock him and big daddy kane and public enemy you know those in the fat boys and um you know um slick rick and um you know what i'm saying dougie fresh you know i'm i'm coming into i'm born into that area so it was just a part of my development you know starting out as an eight nine year old kid break dancing on cardboard and then beatboxing which is why the fat boys and dougie fresh was, was real important to me and then beginning to rhyme you know what i'm saying and 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 wanting to emulate Rakim, emulate Big Daddy Kane, and emulate LL Cool J, you know, and be like Cool G Rap, you know. So <clears throat> for me, it was just getting into that at an early age, eight, nine years old, and just developing that specific skill set. So, and as far as um, the merger between uh, educational lyrics and, and actual hip hop, I'm also a person that likes to read. I'm also a person that's just interested in different things. So it's 
you know, it's not a, I didn't force this together. You know, it was like a marriage made in heaven as far as I'm reading all this and I'm acquiring all this. And then at the same time, I am, um, you know, at the same time, I also just have this, uh, this love for hip hop. That's dope. Because what I was going to ask, because even touching on to that, because like you just mentioned, like your, you know, your love for reading and also how you, you know, project that, you know, the knowledge and understanding through your music. So what was, so what was life like for a young lack? You know, what was it like growing up? Where was your influences come from? Was it, you know, you've grown up in that hip hop era as well. So what was your environment like? One moment, one moment. Give me. Yeah. Yeah. Take your time. Um, you know, I'm from New Brunswick, New Jersey. Um, I, I, I believe, you know, when I came up in that, in that environment, it was, you know, it was an urban area. You know what I'm saying? I'm from the projects in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Um, and from that, you know, it was, uh, you know, it was my grandparents' apartment, you know what I mean? And my mom lived there, my uncles lived there, you know what I mean? My cousins, you know, that was the environment that I came up in. But I also was very fortunate to have grandparents who lived in a neighboring town, uh, Franklin, New Jersey, who was able to really be a play a big part of my life. So, you know, you're 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 a young kid, you're living on, you know, you're hanging out, you know, wilding out, you know, in Jersey, we're still in cars, we're breaking into houses, we're having all types of fights, we're doing all that types of stuff. And then I have my grandparents who now is introducing me into sports. So now I'm playing football. They also introduced me into music. You know, this is the fourth grade I'm in. So I, I, I learned how to play the guitar. They put me in guitar lessons. Not only just put me in there, sat in the lessons with me so that I can learn it. And, um, you know, really just took the time to help me cultivate those. Thank you, sir. Thank you, buddy. Uh, to help me cultivate um, those particular skill sets and have that natural uh, love for music. So, you know, pardon me for that, you know what I mean? <laughs> life is life, man. Life is life. <laughs> but for me, you know, having 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 grandparents like that, you know what I'm saying, and and and, and being introduced to those types of things really changed me as a person really helped me see that, you know, I don't necessarily want to be this, you know, street guy and, and, and do all of this stuff. You know, there's, there's, there's more things that you can do with your time than, you know, everybody that I knew, they was like, you know, listen, if you hustle and you're on the streets, it's, it's debt. You're, you're either going to die, you're going to end up in jail. Mm -hmm. I don't like either one of those things. I never thought that that was cool. You know what I'm saying? Even though I was around everybody getting locked, I never, ever, ever thought that that was cool. And having run-ins where, you know, I could have been somebody locked up, you know what I'm saying? I, this could have went left or that could have went right, you know what I mean? So for me, it was really just a matter of having people, in, I have an aunt, you know what I'm saying, who, who really helped me out, helped me get into college, helped me go to Rutgers University, you know what I'm saying? I, I wouldn't have got in without it, and, and I appreciate a great deal. You know, so I, I have people around me that, that love me. Uh, it's still due to this day <laughs> and was able to just help me grow as a man. You know, you're still young, you're still doing things, you're still wilding. But but when, once I became a grown man, I was able to put everything together. And then as far as hip hop was concerned, being that I do educational lyrics, you know, that has allowed me the space and the room to continue to do things beyond just rapping about uh, what's going on in my hood or, you know what I mean? What's going on now? It, it's, it's, I'm in a totally different lane. You know what I mean? So this is something that, that I can continue to do. It's almost like an obligation. You know, I didn't give myself the title of being a hip hop educator. Somebody, I was called that. So then I just took on that and said, okay, you know, I'm the hip hop educator. You know what I mean? I didn't just come out to the world and say, Hey, I'm this guy. You know, I, this, that's how people viewed me and looked at me. So, you know, all of that stuff was, um, was happening. I, I got a little distracted, so I hope I hope I'm not jumbling. No, it's all good, but it's dope that you told that story because, you know, you know, you know, I'm from that generation of Rucker Park, and your talents they would just give you that name, and so because of your talents and your gift, they gave you that name, and it just stuck on stuck with you, which is which is dope. But at the same time, as we got that kinship, because I'm from Jersey too, 
I Where? Was in New York. Yeah. Born in New York. Oh, man. Okay. I so Jersey's on, in the building all day. That's I was on uh, Kirav and Grumman down Weekway Park. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. My, my older brother's from New York. You know what okay. I mean? North and then when you said New Brunswick, um, I went to high school at Cerebral High School, Middlesex County. Okay. And I know they played New Brunswick High School in, 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 in high school basketball. So when you said New Brunswick, I'm like, oh, my, yo, it's a small world. It is. It is. I played, you know, I was a football player, man. But I ended up moving from New Brunswick. Uh, and then once I got to, like, 13, I moved to Willenboro, New Jersey. So I went from my mom's to my dad's. Um, and I played ball out in Willenboro. And then I ended up moving back. Uh, but I went to South Brunswick and I okay. ended up uh, playing ball in South Brunswick. But I only went there for one year, but I had a heck of a season. Oh, man. That's little dope. linebacker, baby. <laughs> but, yeah, like so much nostalgia, man. That's dope, man. But um, can you kind of talk about how when you um, create music, how do you kind of when it comes to storytelling? I mean, you know, and I think that's an art. And how do you kind of paint that picture when it comes to in your music, telling that narrative when it comes to history? Because sometimes when we talk about history, usually the winners tell the story. And so they leave a lot of stuff out. So can you kind of talk about that writing process for yourself when it comes to writing a song and telling that narrative about a certain figure you're talking about in your song when it comes to history? There's, there's, there's a couple uh, steps, you know, number one is I, I was, I didn't begin as a, a, a hip hop educator, you know what I'm saying? My rhymes, I started mm. out battling. I started out trying to have the illest metaphors and, and you know, and coming up with, with punchlines and things of that nature. So that was the beginning process. And, and when you're doing that, you're pretty much rhyming to everybody else's instrumentals. You know what I mean? So my my earlier works were to just a lot of instrumentals. That's that's what we all did. And until I uh and when I went to Willenboro, then I started going to the studio. Then I started, you know, having beats, you know what I'm saying? Uh shout out to my man uh Megahertz, who who's a childhood friend. But when I uh moved to Willenboro, I met him and and one of my first demos is him and I recording a whole demo. But <laughs> you, you have you have a process of yeah that's true you have a process of just writing and having finding your own voice and then I got to the point where I wanted to listen to the beat and have the beat guide me I wanted to say yo where does this beat want to take me how am I going to bounce and flow on this because I really want to be in the pocket of the rhythm and then once I got to the educational it was a matter of well what story do I want to tell how do I want to represent people. And now let me get a narrative and now let me pick the beat that I think is going to go with this. You know what I mean? So I can either hear something and write to it or I can have an idea and say, how do, how do I want to paint this picture? So the answer to the question is, I think there's different ways to come up with a, with a song. And I don't necessarily um, have one particular set format. I could hear a beat and say, y'all want to rhyme like this to it. Or I could have thoughts in my head and have rhymes to say, oh, this this rhyme will go with this beat. Maybe I got to change a word or two so I could breathe on it correctly. But, I, you know, I use a bunch of tactics. You know what I mean? I, I use use a bunch of different tactics um, to, to really come up with these songs. But the educational stuff is really coming out of my personal library. When you listen to Lesson One, Hip Hop and Education, every song is a book that I have from Congress from the end of the first 25 presidents to the Moors to, um, you know, 50 states. You know, you can look at my library and see the actual book. You know what I mean? Like Black Women in Congress is a book called Women in Congress. You know what I mean? It's the Moors. You know what I mean? I have a book called The Moors by Ivan Van Sertima. You know what I mean? So these songs, I wanted to take them out of books because I wanted the information to be correct. I don't want it to tell you something that I think, you know what I mean? I heard this, so I told it. I, I really want to be, so when you listen to it, I can have a reference, I can have a source, and I can have something to stand on in case you want to be combative about the information that I'm speaking. So, um, you know, there's, there's different tactics that I use for everything. That's dope. And one of the phrases I love hearing is that the, the most dangerous uh, black man is an educated black man. That's what they say. 
<laughs> well, I'm kind of I'm kind of 50 50 on that to be honest with you because an educated okay. black man can still, yeah, it could be more of a danger to himself more so than he is a danger to to everybody else, or could be a danger to the community in some cases as well. Because once again, not all education is necessarily key or factual. It's what you're educated on. But it's beautiful to hear that you know you like you said you don't. It's the fact checking. So it's like you say, if people are going to be competitive against you and question where you're getting your sources of information you can say well this is this this is it there so you know let's have and it's not like you're actually wanting to have like an argument you're saying well look let's have the debate let's have the conversation let's you know work this all out but it's a beautiful thing that you're doing and because I was going to touch on that as well which you've touched on lightly was where did your where did because I know you grew up with it but where was your love into hip-hop and then for your you know before you what made you want to get into battling where did your love of lyricism come from um, well, first, just to go back on the, the danger, uh, the question that <clears throat> the question that you have to ask is a danger to who? And mm. to go back to your question, brother, um, when I was beatboxing, I was beatboxing. I really don't, you know, I, I just I started beatboxing. You know, I, no, 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 no. Let me rephrase. I know exactly <laughs> where I got beatboxing from. There was a person. I moved from the projects to another building in New Brunswick on Livingston Avenue. It was my, my mom's uh, first apartment. And it was me, my mother, and I had a cousin um, who lived with me because it was my mother's sister's daughter. But my mother's sisters passed away and uh, my cousin came to live with me. And it's more like my sister. And she's, she also recently passed away. But um, she had friends come over that were beatboxing and I'm a little I'm six seven years old you know what I'm saying my cousin's older than me so they were beatboxing and they were freestyling they were we lived on the third floor so they would just look out the window and start freestyling you know and this was like really my introduction into being intimately seeing that you know seeing somebody freestyle this is you, you, you're going this is 80s and, and beatbox and I started beatboxing and I had a natural talent for doing that. So now I'm in school beatboxing for a bunch of people, a bunch of rappers. And my man, Hal, my man, Hal Reynolds, who, who's, a, um, who's a minister today, you know what I'm saying? God really saved this brother. And he turned to me one day and was like, yo, kick a rhyme. I was beatboxing for him. And he turned to me and said, kick a rhyme. We're in St. Peter's uh, School in New Brunswick, New Jersey, in the lunchroom, banging on the tables and beatboxing, and I'm beatboxing everybody. And he turns to me, he was like, yo, kick a rhyme, L. And that, and then I, 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 I started rapping, and I was in the third grade, and that was the first time I ever did that. And then from there, it grew from there. So from, from the breakdancing to the beatboxing to somebody saying, yo, kick a rhyme, I never stopped after that. You know what I'm saying? In the fourth grade, I have my fourth, my first rap group. You know what I mean? And in the fifth grade, <laughs> and then in the sixth grade, I'm, you know, I'm now I'm battling everybody. You know what I mean? And and doing that thing. You know what I'm saying? And now seventh, eighth grade. Now I'm in Willowbrook. Now I'm going to the studio. You know what I'm saying? New Brunswick is different from Willowbrook. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, same type of kids. You know what I mean? But it's it was it was a different environment as New Brunswick was um was really heard when I was coming up. And Willingboro at that time was a lot more middle class. You know what I mean? So it was just a different, different thing that was going on. But that was the seed. You know what I mean? Just to explain it in full, that that was the seed. Yeah, that's beautiful, man. For, I just love these stories because I'm being here from the UK. Uh, as I said on previous interviews and pods, my introduction to hip hop was a lot different than yours, especially if you're from, you know, from New Jersey or from that, from the East, the East Coast, because that's where it was born. That's where it was birthed from. So I'm kind of interested in those little nitty gritty, you know, stories, everyone's little part, because it kind of completes, for me personally, that hip hop story. And that's where my love for hip hop kind of comes from. So no, just thanks very much for sharing that, man, for real. Appreciate that, man. They say hip hop was born in the Bronx, New York. Um, I know they give shout outs to, you know, Cool Herc, Africa, Bambada, Grandmaster Flash, and the Furious Five, you know, um, Sugar Hill Gang. You know, these were the, the pioneers of, of rap. And to me, I think that the culture shift came when you had Run DMC and LL mm -hmm. Cool I think that was because Melly Mel, one of the greatest rappers of all time, 
and and the message is one of the most powerful songs of all time. But then you get to a point where now hip hop is representing what your avenue looks like. You know what I mean? So even though you had Melly Mel uh, growing up in his own war zone, you know, when you seen him, you didn't see that. I, we only seen him on TV. You know what I mean? But then when now when you're looking at Run DMC, now when you're looking at LL Cool J, now when you're looking at Rakim, now when you're looking at Big Dad, it was it was a it was a culture uh, shift from that to that. You know what I mean? The same as when Nas came out. You know what I'm saying? Nas is another person who shifted the culture of hip hop. You know what I mean? Using every producer. You know what I'm saying for for that one album. You know what I mean? And and you know talking about the things that he he talked about it was it was a culture shift that Nas came in when Illmatic came out same you know what i mean as it, as you know you have your different culture things you know cash money brought a new culture you know what i'm saying the south brought a new culture you know what i mean west coast snoop dogg brought a new culture but you know that for me i know it began in the bronx and 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 and, and that form of hip hop but when I really, really gravitated to it, even though I listen to Melly Mountain, I know all the lyrics and stuff like that. It was really LL Cool J, Run DMC, Big Daddy Kane, Cool G Rap, Chuck D, Chub Rock, Redhead Kingpin. Um, you know, these were the people that I grew up listening to all of the time. Just Ice, <laughs> you know, uh, X Clan, um, Brand Nubian. You know, these were. I'm 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 the guy getting all of the albums and and reading all of the stuff on the back. Tribe Called Quest, they all you know that you know what I mean it's I'm a I'm a fan and a student of hip hop. And um, being a student of hip hop, <laughs> I wanted to review. What did you think started the commercialization of hip hop? Do you think it kind of started with Run DMC, with the Maya Adidas, or when they did that um, joint with Aerosmith? Or do you think like Curtis Blow? Because wasn't it Curtis Blow like the first to get an endorsement deal with Sprite? I think Curtis Blow was like one of the first platinum rappers, I believe. You know what I mean? Um, I don't. He might be. I think so. I think commercialism actually came in because when Run DMC came out with my Adidas, it you know, well, when more when rap started making more money. To me, that's when the real commercialism came in. Because when Run DMC was out, people yeah. were still saying that this was going to be a dying thing. You know, people were still saying hip hop won't last. You know, Run DMC happened to show companies that, yo, we influenced this and everybody's going to buy Adidas now. But it still, it still didn't resonate, I think, to mainstream America the way it did as as time progressed and, and, and more money. So by the time you get to like the bad boy, era, you know what I'm saying? By the time you get to Snoop, so much money is being made at hip hop at this point. This is when it becomes a commercial thing. And this is when you see a real shift. And now it's not about your creativity and your own sound. Now it's the company saying, oh, this is what's selling. We're going to grab everybody that sounds like this and put all of y'all out so that we can make money now. And forgetting about the, the, the root of hip hop, which is supposed to be the uniqueness and the individuality of an artist. So for me, Run DMC showed the world something, but it wasn't to me fully appreciated until millions upon millions upon millions, you know, of dollars was being made by corporations as they slowly said, yo, this is going to last. And, and and now I can grab it and contaminate it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> For me, the commercialism came in when an excess amount, we were talking about hundreds of millions of dollars was being made. That wasn't the run DMC ever. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure they was well off and I'm sure that, you know, they was making more money than everybody else and doing all that. But you, you, you're talking about people that were still figuring out contracts. Yeah. And jerking it, you know what I mean? It wasn't, a, um, you know, those artists wasn't getting paid like the artists that came later on down the line. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it was, um, what did JC? He said, I'm, a, I'm overcharging people for what they did to the Cold Crush. You know what I'm saying? Like that, <laughs> that whole thing was an experimentation type thing of people saying this ain't going to last. But once it became something that's that you know you can market and make money off, then that's the real commercialism of hip hop.
Right, because mm. the reason why I think about that is like I go back to the like kid and play, the house mm. party movies. Mm. Uh, they had a cartoon, mm -hmm. you know, they lunch boxes, even MC Hammer. MC Hammer in that nineties <laughs> era time when you were saying cats like, oh, we could make money off this, so let's like just take advantage of it. Yeah, exploit it. You know, and um, you know, it it just it, it took off from there, man. You know what I mean? And and it wasn't even just hip hop music. You know, a black culture has always been exploited because you know, even that time you had Mr. T and his cereal. I remember that. I used to eat the Mr. T. <laughs> I'm I remember his song. <laughs> you better love your mother. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I forgot about that one. But uh, yeah, man, it's you know the the, the culture um, is just is something that that people want to tap into.